there are many ways of using artificial intelligence. And banks, for example, have been using it for credit card fraud protection. I mean, there are dozens of applications. Tell us why you think it might be particularly helpful in an understanding and addressing the environment crisis. So I would say more than helpful, it will be needed in a world that is going through this crisis. Mm. If you look at, you know, the climate science, what mm. it's telling us is, A, that we're going to live in a even more resource constrained environment, mm. starting with natural resources, mm. but it will expand to everything we produce from there, is going to be more constrained mm. and not as widely available as mm. it used to be. And second, the variability mm. of the environment is going to increase. Got so it. we're going to have less reali reliability in the availability of resources, the availability, for example, of power, of mm. electricity production, of agricultural production. Yeah. This increased variability is also going to make the environment businesses live in more complex. Got it. And so given those two things, mm. I think there's a push for companies to be even smarter about the way Got they it. make decisions, even more efficient in the way they operate. So you're saying that we as academics at uh, business schools, um, the tools that AI enables us to kind of build are particularly well suited, as it were, to, to solving these types of problems. Exactly. Yeah. And it's great also to see that AI as a tool is still evolving and improving right. exactly. because we're going to need more and more of these tools. Got it. I want to, to, to home in on some of the work that you've done as a management scientist. Um, there's one piece of work you're quite well known for around uh, cleaning up the oceans, uh, which have got too much plastic in them. Why don't you just uh, just give us a quick sort of summary of, of what that's about? What was the problem that you were addressing? How did you tackle it? So this is a collaboration with a Dutch NGO called the Ocean Cleanup. Mm -hmm. And their objective is to clean up 90% of ocean plastic pollution in 2040. So of course, it's a very mm -hmm. aspirational and ambition goal. Yeah. Um, the idea here is to see plastic as any emissions, right. okay? It's something we emit. Actually, millions of tons of plastics are being emitted every year into the ocean. Right. That comes from fisheries, of mm -hmm. course, uh, fish vessels, but also from landfills, from plastic waste, mm -hmm. and, and so on. And so the idea here is basically to build the equivalent of carbon capture for plastic, right. okay? Right, right. So the idea is... If those emissions have been made, have happened, mm -hmm. can we take them back from mm -hmm. the environment? Mm -hmm. And there are different ways to do so. And so one particular technology we've been helping them with is trying to do this in the open sea. Mm -hmm. So because of sea currents, it mm -hmm. turns out that the plastic wastes, uh, waste tends to accumulate it in certain parts of the ocean. Uh, and in particular, they've been operating in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, mm -hmm. which is basically... Uh, twice the size of Texas, three times the size of France. Um, and it's... Of plastic. I mean, it's not... Of I mean, highly concentrated I plastic. Understand. It's not a plastic island. You yeah. cannot walk on it. <laughs> but it's 80,000 tons of plastic in this particular oh region. Right. And because of currents, plastic right. ev it. everywhere so from, the, from, from the earth, or at least from the Pacific, tends to converge to that area. And so they've developed a big fishing net. Huh. They're dragging a net with two fish, trying to catch plastic this way. Huh. The issue is that this is quite inefficient if right. you do it in a right. random or, or stupid way. Right. And so what we've been working with them is a routing algorithm hmm. to route their system in the ocean right. to catch as much plastic as possible. Hmm. So I, I usually summarize that as a very sophisticated example of Pac-Man. You know, right, this right, video right. game exactly. where you yeah, need yeah, to yeah. eat a lot of eat, our fruit. Yep. It's exactly the same thing. Like we're Pac-Man with yeah. this massive plastic collecting system hmm. and we need to catch as much plastic as possible given the fact that the plastic is moving, mm -hmm. of course, with the sea right. current, that the system does not move fast mm. because you don't want to catch any marine life. And you also have wave height, wind, sea right. current that's also impacting your ability right. to navigate. And so your your contribution is to build an, an algorithm to sort of plug in a bunch of data, develop a way of modeling the the movement of the plastic so that you can tell the trawler where to go next. Is that correct? Exactly. So here the the idea and the, the core of the algorithm is taking in data about weather, 
right. uh, current weather, weather forecast right. about plastic movement, which is also a model from plastic dispersion, and building an algorithm that computes the optimal route mm -hmm. and computes the route that would lead the best yield right. in terms of collection to increase the efficiency of the collect. Huh. And so what we see is that by being smart about how to navigate, we can increase the yield by nearly 60% on average. So over and above what they would normally have collected, you get an extra 60%. Exactly, just by being smart in where you go in huh. that massive... And, and you're doing this in sort of in real time because, I mean, I guess the weather is changing. Day so by day, we, right? we update dynamically. The idea right. is to, uh, so we're currently rolling out the algorithm so that they can use it offshore uh, when they resume operation after the winter. And the idea would be to recompute, let's say, something like every day. Mm. Uh, of course, you want to adapt to new forecasts, but right. you also don't want to change every other, you know, right, every right. second because right. you don't want to be shooting a moving target either, That's right? Good. So um, then I think something like every day is probably what, what we could right. do. Right. We're helped a little bit by the system because they collect the trash. It accumulates in a zone like a trash bag that they right. need to empty regularly. Right, right, right. And in that case, they need to stop. Hmm. Okay, hmm. so uh, we don't need to schedule for like a full month ahead right. anyway. Right. Uh, so currently what we're doing is trying to plan for the whole week. Uh, but re-evaluating this decision every day. Huh. And are there any other applications of this same piece of research? There are a lot of very related problems that are highly relevant in other use cases. So, for example, um, they've been talking to a young startup in France that is doing weather forecasting for uh, maritime routing. Oh, and here there's a, also an opportunity just for routing ships, regular ships, Got you know, uh, that can maybe use the current to yeah. reduce the amount of fuel yeah. they need. So there's also a big question, especially for the longer trip. So if you're interested in Trans-Pacific or Transatlantic trip, it's usually something that takes between one or two weeks. So mm. there's a huge challenge on whether you can optimize right. these routes wow. to leverage Got sea it. currents. Let's go back to the environmental crisis more generally and, th and there are so many aspects to that from you know agriculture and wildlife conversation to smart energy to waste management i'm just going to pick up on a couple that i was reading about in preparing for this podcast um so one was google deep mind and deep mind is the the subsidiary of, of google that's based in london uh, they created some sort of state-of-the-art ai model 